In this episode, Mitponk gets boosted, KOS does even more work for me, and I learn some basic geography. All of this and more coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome. Just time warping here to the completion of our next craft. Okay, so the Dudley is ready to fly. Uh, we are going to just get the sunrise and do it, I think. Yep. You may recall a few episodes ago me designing this plane, but now it's time for it to complete its first mission. Okay, so let us launch the Dudley. Let's clear all who is going to fly this thing. So pilots. Oh, I think Valentina. Let's get Valentina. I don't think I've seen Valentina lately. And I don't think I have any scientists on the surface. I do not, but we'll give her a co-pilot. I don't want to use Midpont. She's needed for an upcoming mission. Let's get Gwenny out there. So Valentina's going to take Gwenny, our new pilot. This is the Dudley Mark One. And uh, this is designed as a high altitude jet. It should be able to cruise at an altitude of above 18 kilometers. And the main purpose of that has to do with science. We have aboard the cloud experiment, which is obviously ready to go, but it won't go until we're up over 18 kilometers. And oh dear, I just realized something. I believe the cloud experiment, I think I just messed something up. Val is a level two pilot. Wenny's obviously not gonna help. I am pretty sure. Let's get over to science. Cloud. Cloud requires a level three pilot. Oh shoot, do I have a level three pilot available? Ah. This is gonna take Val and Gwenny out for a week. Go to here. Pilots, pilots, pilots. Uh, Lagerfurt, but I gotta wait for him. Okay. Okay. I'm glad I brought you down to the surface there, Lagerfurt. Okay. Then, let's think about what we're gonna do. Okay, let's go to this. Let's fly it. Let's recover this into the space plane hangar, and we'll come up with a story that Val and Gwenny uh, had a terrible mountain biking accident. <laughs> and they're out for a week because of their adventures. So we're going to have to wait until Lagerfurt's ready. Once la and then we can do that. But that's going to take almost six days, so it's going to be a while till we get to that. Not exactly an auspicious start here. Let's see if we can make up for it. Okay, so this is round two of the Sentinel. I suppose I should rename this the Sentinel 1B because the first one two ups ago, well, actually I had a couple of issues. Number one was the Kerbalism decided that it was going to make this core engine fail on me. That happens now and again, so that was a launch failure. But the whole probe was destined not to make it anyway because the Kraken decided that I uh, didn't like my struts in my radial fuel tanks that I had on there. I'm hoping that has resolved itself. We'll have to see. There is a contract associated with this. Let's get the contracts out for the Sentinel-1. Um, and this is to reach a particular orbit around the Sun. We'll look at the orbital parameters in just a little bit, but right now I'm a little more concerned just about the insertion than I am about this. Okay, we are in space, everything is deploying. Happy, happy there. This is further than it's ever gotten before. <laughs> okay, let's get to that. Going for a 90 kilometer equatorial orbit, a little bit higher than I typically do because this thing is gonna go for a interplanetary type of burn. So its ejection is gonna be fairly long. This insertion certainly isn't. 
And getting a little bit of extra altitude with something with not a high thrust to weight ratio means that gives you, you don't have any danger of as you're burning going down into the atmosphere. Okay, program is ended. Oh, let's give it a little bit more. End it a little early. There we go. Okay, here comes the test on separations where things went wild last time. So, separate. But it looks like our fix. I don't want to jinx it. Looks like our fix is okay. I don't see any wackiness happening. All right, and let's start thinking about our ejection. And it's interesting. Um, I've done... Let's turn off, everybody. There we go. I've done interplanetary burns before, but always in the past I've done uh, it using the window transfer planner because I actually were, was going to a planet. But this one, we are looking to just go into an orbit around the sun with an altitude of about, uh, but we'll call that 10 million kilometers. So it's going to be somewhere between Kerbin's orbit and Eve's orbit, somewhere in this is in, yeah, a little bit higher than Eve's orbit. So we're going to do this. Just I'm just going to set up the burn here and get my ejection. And this is kind of a little bit more how you do interplanetaries without with stock. Now, when you think about an interplanetary burn, what you th think about being kind of in Kerbin's orbit. And imagine this, you were just a ship in this orbit and you needed to bring your periapsis down, right? You need to bring this part of the orbit down. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to burn retrograde, which is in this direction because Kerbin's going around in this direction. So we need to eject ourselves in that same direction. We need to eject ourselves in that direction. So we need to put a burn around here. And it always ends up turning out that as you, this is approximately, of course, as you, uh, if you're burning for the inner solar system, you always end up having your burn crossing the day side of Kerbin. And if you're burning for on the, for the outer solar system, you're always on the other side, on the dark side of Kerbin. So I'm just going to come out to here. In fact, I'm going to use the stock nodes here. There's no reason to get too fancy. And we want our periapsis uh to be about actually we'll go for the apoapsis 10.2 million kilometers so i'm just going to uh just start hitting this retrograde business oh wait no prograde of course <laughs> like that now to really dial this in to get it really close to where you want it to be all you got to do is put up the time in. let's go up in 20 second intervals and just adjust the time to get this periapsis as low as you can get it. So that's when you're at the best spot. So for instance here, you can see that's making it better. No, that's making it worse, I'm sorry. This way is making it better. Oh, I must be hitting the moon, what a pain. Okay, and the moon is really good at getting in your way. It has a tendency to do that. How about 10.2 again? Okay, let's see how the timing can be adjusted. So does this make it better? That makes me hit the moon. And, oh, that way makes it better. That way makes it better. That way makes it better. That way makes it worse. So let's turn down the time interval now to maybe every five seconds. Really try and dial this in. That makes it worse. That makes it worse. Okay, let's go to every second. Get this right to the second. Oh, I saw 400, 406, 400. That's as good as that's going to get. I can see I'm a little bit burning too much. Again, I want this to be around 10.209 million kilometers. So 10, 209. That's pretty darn close right there. And I budgeted about two kilometers per second for this whole thing and the insertion. It's got 2,157 meters per second in it. Um, so I'm thinking I should be good. And if you want to get into calculating this, it's not that different from doing an interplanetary um, burn. And I've talked about how to calculate interplanetary burns, ejections and insertions and captures at the other end. I've talked about how to do the math of that in my Let's Do the Math series, and I did a few different planets. Easiest one is Duna, and 
This burns very much the same as what you would be doing if you were going to Duna. Obviously, we're going the other way. Um, the only difference in the calculation is, is that instead of doing a capture burn at the planet end, you're just going to do a straight up burn just to lower your apoapsis down to get your orbital as assertion, which is just a straight up use of the, this Viva equation. So it um, this is definitely calculable and you can check out the video up here on the right if you want to learn a little bit on how to do that yourself or don't be afraid to fire me a question or two. Here's the stupid moon. We're not missing it by very much. If you find that you're trying to do an interplanetary burn, like an ejection burn from Kerbin and the moon's in your way, the all you got to do is uh, just hop ahead in orbit or two or three or whatever it takes to get it so that you're not hitting the moon anymore. All right, so this thing is off, and it's going to be, oh, just about a minute for the burn. That's not so bad. I thought it was going to be a longer burn than this. I guess that's a better thrust-to-weight ratio than I thought. Um, the Sentinel Infrared Telescope is obviously on here. Uh, it is required for this contract, map 15 asteroids, and also, once you get yourself into high space, uh, starts collecting science for you as well. Uh, that's all it does is collect science in high space. So once we're over 250 kilometers, it will start collecting science. I think it takes a long time to do that. So, uh, but it'll be in orbit around the sun. We'll have lots of time to do it. You can see I put on a mag, uh, the magnetometer. It's on there as well. So it's already collecting a little bit of science from the magnetometer. It won't be collecting too much by the time it's out of Kerbin's SOI, but it'll be spending a lot of time in the sun's SOI collecting magnetometer type of data. Okay, we are getting close to the end of the burn. Let's see how it does. And we are done. And what's our periapsis? I am ecstatic about that. That's perfectly great. Okay. So that's all set up. Basically, all that's left now is just to ride this around till we get to periapsis, perform a burn to get in our final thing. This looks like it's in an orbit, just begging for Eve to mess with it, but hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> we'll see. But meanwhile, this is on its way. Okay, I'm kind of curious. Let's get ourselves into high space. I'm kind of curious what happens when this guy kicks in. Infrared telescope. <laughs> 25 years and a day for it to collect 594 science. So it's not insignificant. That's in around Kerbin. Um, clearly, it's only going to collect a small fraction of that as we're on our way out. But uh, that's going to be a nice little steady source of science for me as it orbits the sun anyway. And we'll rejoin this when it leaves Kerbin's SOI. On to other things. Time for you to show me what you can do. In this simulation, the landing legs are refusing to deploy. They sure kind of look deployed to me. <laughs> Get outside and fix them. All right, let's explain what is going on with this one. So let's pull up the right contract. This is my little trainer. Not really much to it. You can see it's just a... Oh, we're getting some jiggling happening. Maybe I should get this going pretty quickly. But it is a pea pod that can hold two kerbals. And those two Kerbals are Mad B, my level four, an insane level four engineer. She has 25 special experience. These are all, that's all experience from these training contracts. And speaking of training, she is going to be training Mitpont, our newest engineer. And uh, the training mission right here is coming from the Kerbal Academy contract pack. Uh, we got to take Mitpont, we got to perform an EVA, Mabby's got to be around, and he's got to be out there for, it looks like, three minutes and eight seconds, and that's about it, and for that, he gets experience. Why not? So, oh, great job, your medal will be waiting for you upon return to the KSC. I don't want no stinking medal, I want experience, that's what I want. So right now, Mitpont has five experience, I, the five experience he does have is from the space camp, a number of episodes ago okay he is now done and I guess we got to get him aboard we'll see what this does I don't know if it'll be enough to get him up a level but why not and of course Madby just stayed inside that whole time <laughs> educating from the comfort of your seat that's the ticket Mitpont's now level two he gains six experience from that oh 
Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> that is awesome. Contract complete. Perfect. Mipponk can feel the benefit of Mad B. Kerman and their experience already. All right. A little bit of an issue with singular and plural there, but that's okay. All right. Uh, vessel is being recovery. recoveried. <laughs> Speaking of uh, having issues with the English language. Yep, I think we're going to roll out our Magneto Probe. We'll do that one next. This is a Magneto Probe 2. There is a Magneto Probe 1, which actually I started building before Magneto Probe 2. Um, but Magneto Probe 1 has the Gravioli Detector on it. This one does not. And Gravioli Detector was a new piece of science. It always takes a bit of time to... Uh, well, your first build with new, new, uh, new components on it. A very familiar looking rocket. All it's going to do is go up inside here is the magnetometer. This one's going to go into a polar orbit so that it can stay in low space and cross at least a couple of different belts uh, to collecting magnetometer report type of stuff. Seems all kind of really boring, but actually there's a couple of things that I have done different with this one that I think is worth talking about. And the first thing has to do with KOS. I have not spoken a lot about KOS lately because I really haven't done much with it. It takes time to develop stuff and I'm spending more time playing <laughs> than I am developing software. But um, I did mostly because I saw somebody else doing it. I go, really? It's that simple? Really? Yes, is to use boot folders. So I have a boot program called Boot1. This is the entire program right here. You can see it there across your screen. And all it does is load in my X-Men script and my circ at script uh, into the ship itself and then switch the drive to zero. And I switch the drive to zero because it's on the zero drive, which is the what's called the archive in the KOS parlance, which is really just all the software that's saved on your computer. So if I type list right now, I have all of my various KOS programs available. And from here, I always do my launch script from here because the launch script is actually fairly big. I figure you would run a script like that from the KSC, not necessarily from the rocket itself. So I feel fairly comfortable running my launch script from the archive. But if I switch now to one, which is my rocket, what did I do wrong there? So I didn't type the word two. Switch to one. Right, and now go list. I have my circad script and my xman script loaded on for me automatically typically i have to type in those commands to get it to do that i don't know why i never did this it saves me a ton of time all i got to do is when i'm in the vab and doing this once i've saved the file into the boot folder then automatically those files become available in the vab and all i have to do is before I push this thing out into the building queue is just select which boot file I want to use. And you can have multiple ones for multiple types of missions. Pretty cool. Anyway, we're gonna switch back to our archive and then we're gonna run our launch script. This fella is going into a polar orbit, so minus 90, so we'll go down towards the south. And I'm shooting for an apoapsis of 240 kilometers. That will keep it in low space. We're going to go this way, so watch this way. <laughs> that keeps it in low space. Low space, of course, being at the border between low space and high space being at 250 kilometers, but pretty close as high as I can be in low space and still be in low space to maximize my magnetometer return. And then this thing is just going to sit in that polar orbit for quite a number of days until it's finished off collecting all of those magnetometer reports. So. All right, and as we get set to do our file insertion burn here, there it goes. Uh, just to draw attention to the other new thing that's on this, and you saw me playing around with this in the VAB, but this is the first time I'm doing it uh, in without being in simulation mode, where if something goes wrong, that's just what it is, is I have a total of six separatrons here 
that are just getting ready to just shove away this booster and deorbit it. So these separatrons are on the same stage as the stage to insert my probe. The probe is in a very, very nice orbit right now. So we're just going to hit the space bar. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can turn the thrust down on that, I think. Oh, and it really kicked. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, it really kicked up my apoapsis. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think I need to turn down. <laughs> Let's get this back down below 250 kilometers. So I think I need to turn down the force of that. That went off a little bit uh, too too crazily. Okay, that should be good. Uh, let's <laughs> get this ready. Oh my gosh, the reaction wheels are super powerful. And let's get this up into the line. Oh wait, let's take a look at, oh my golly golly, so much stuff. That should be debris now. Now if I highlight it, can I, oh, maybe if I, can I hit the debris, set it as a target. You can see now that is, it's periapsis. Oh, it didn't quite make it at the six. Shoot. Okay. Okay. I, I am playing around with, I found with a normal 80 kilometer insertion. Ah, shoot. Didn't quite have enough. Okay. Normally I go to an 80 kilometer insertion and um, that's usually only requires actually a couple of separatrons. So still playing with the idea of it. And I could, by the way, put on some parachutes on the thing and stage recovery will recover it and give me some money back. But I just, I don't know, I couldn't be bothered. Okay, there it is, there's the probe. It is busy collecting its magnetometer goodness. It's gonna have a lot still to collect. It's transmitting that away, does it tell me? Oh, it's actually pretty close to being able to do so we're in, what is this, Kerbin Space Low Magnetosphere. Remember how this works. Let's put these all on again. Boink. There we go. There's all our, so, so right now we're just in the magnetosphere. But scroll out a bit. There we go. Now we can see them. I should be able to change. So right now it says Space Low Magnetosphere. But if I time warp a little bit. Oh, now it says space low inner belt. There's a lot more science that could be collected in the inner belt. But I think there was a brief moment where I had something else. Let's see if we can get this. So it says space low inner belt. I think it's just as we make this little tiny transition here. Space low magnetosphere is uh, having no trouble. That's almost complete. Probably uh, I got that just from the space station. But I think there's a bit here. Still says space low magnetosphere. Space low outer belt where there's a ton of science, but it's very briefly in space low outer belt. That's going to take a long time for it to collect all that. So there is a space low outer belt. It gets just in this kind of little wedge. All right, but well, whatever. We'll leave it here. It'll collect science in the background. Let's move on. So this is the Maxwell 8 on its way to Mimmis. There's Mimmis over here. Why don't we start time warping in that direction? And there's actually two more Maxwell still to come. The 9 and the 10, both of which are on their way to the moon. Or not on their way. They're in the building queue right now. And then that's going to be it for the Maxwells. <laughs> Getting these all going, though, I think is a good one. Okay, so we want to put this in a 350 kilometer orbit. That is close enough. What is our inclination like? 91.8. Um, we can fix it. It's, let's, let's, let's fix. So first of all, let's run our circuit. Why? What happened there? Problem on 9.11. What? Oh, wait, yeah, that's right. Run, circ, add, it takes a parameter. Periapsis, silly. There we go. So there's our circularization burn there, but what I'd like to do is just tweak my inclination. Our projected, in oh, let's select this. Our projected inclination is 92 degrees, so let's uh, add a little bit of normalness. I don't know which way will make this better or worse. 
Okay, perfect. All right, that's cool. That's cool. That burn's coming up in two hours and 27 minutes. Anything else exciting happening in that time? Nope, nope. Everything else is boring. So, I'll also just get down there. And as we make our way down, I'd like to welcome our newest patron, Jamie Harrison. Welcome aboard, Jamie. Your support, as well as the support of all of my patrons, is very much appreciated. So, thank you. You're playing with the scan site. You always want to take a look at whatever sensors you're working with and find out what their ideal altitudes are. This one's ideal altitude is 350 kilometers above the surface. Most of them are 250, it seems. Oh dear. Oh, this might be completely messed up now. Um. I can't. Ah, by the time I. Okay. I had that thrust way down on nothing. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Okay, I started that burn way too early. I wasn't paying attention. All right, we're gonna need to do some tweakifying on this. So our ink, uh, everything sinks. Everything stinks. Oh my god. Oh my god. How did you mess this up so badly? Okay, actually, we can probably do some fixing right now. If I burn, push this radially out. Thankfully, we got lots and lots of fuel. So I had the thrust limiter way down too low. That was my own stupidity. I'm noticing I'm about halfway between my apoapsis and my periapsis, so this is a good place to do a radial burn to try and bring down the eccentricity. So if I burn outwards, away from Minmus, that will push up my periapsis, because it's what's ahead of me, and will bring down my apoapsis. So I want to bring them both, see if we can get them pretty close together. So, just burn slow. Be careful, you might have limited ignitions. What are is my ignition situation on this thing? 11 ignitions left. Many, 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 many. Okay. And my inclination got messed up because of that, too. It doesn't even look right, does it? Hey, hey, hey. Okay, let's set up a burn about here-ish, around the equatorial, oh, it even gives it equatorial ascending node. Let's fix this up, oh my golly. So I should have noticed by the burn time that this was wrong. So we'll fix inclination first. A little more prograde. Okay, what's my inclination at? That's, I'm, I'm perfectly good with that. Now I'm gonna pay some attention. This is a 4.1 meter per second burn. Burn time's projected at being 0.3. So this would be a good opportunity to reduce this thrust. Now you do want this thrust reduced, okay. Huh, smooth. Okay, that is, you know, I should pay attention to electricity too. Magneto probe one is ready. So let's take Magneto Probe 1 and roll that out. That'll take 18 minutes. This burn is still two hours away, so we should deal with that first. This one's the one that's going in roughly an equatorial orbit, and it's going to work its way outwards through all the various belts um, until it's out in a very high orbit getting everywhere. But right now, I, I said relatively equ equatorial because if you take a look, Notice how the um, the belts themselves are inclined. They're tilted over from Kerbin's poles. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, I'm trying to get the belts kind of edge on as best I can. And it's probably about as close as I'm gonna get, right about there. And if I do my launch from here and go up towards the north in about, I don't know, maybe 15 degrees, I'm really, really good. Let's go with 10 degrees. I don't think it's too essential, but we're going to go into an inclined orbit of 10 degrees. Why don't we call it that? Why not? So we're going to time warp this. 
Oh, I'm very confused. What just happened there? I think they're moving around on... No? Oh. I don't know what... what that was, that was kind of strange. It felt like the belts moved. They don't move, do they? That would be crazy. Must have been just my perspective. I don't think so. Of course they move, you doofus. They're connected to the bloody planet. Okay, this isn't going to work. <laughs> the magnetic fields, of course, aren't orbits. They're connected to the planet. So as the planet rotates, these belts are going to rotate. I can, and as the ship is now sitting on the planet, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm really wasting my time with this. Okay, uh, let's just do it. We're going equatorial. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So let's just go equatorial. That was a special kind of stupid there. I'm wondering if one of the alternate launch sites might have been a better choice. Put the launch sites on. Now that it doesn't matter. I've already gone done this, but probably from here, the desert launch site might have been a better choice for this. Uh, that's unfortunate because precious little reasons to launch from these alternate sites. It's too bad I didn't think about it. If I went to the desert site, it actually was closer to being at... Ah, whatever. Oh, it's doing a gravity scan in low space. It's going to take 90 flipping days to do that gravity scan. Oh my gosh. I'm not convinced... It's worth hanging around for 90 days before... I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I might launch another probe to do the gravity scan in low space. Or stick one on the space station, for goodness sakes. That's a much more sensible choice, isn't it? Just put one on the space station. Space station's always there. Maybe with the next... Yeah, I think so. With the next supply run to the space station. Alright, and just like before, I got the six... Separatrons here, though these ones have their thrust turned down as well as the decoupler force on that decoupler is turned right down. So we're going to try this again and see if this works a little bit better. So, okay, close that and stage. That goes. Still gave it more of a kick than I like. The gravy, yeah. Wow. Doesn't even feel like I. Okay, let's. Turn this around. How many ignitions on this little ant? 76. Oh my gosh, okay. I just want to get the whole thing in low space. Bringing down that apple apsis. I swear I turned down the thrust on those. <laughs> Alright, we're under 250 kilometers all the way around. Solar panels have a nice exposure. We are collecting... Uh, gravity, see, I'm not going to wait around the 90 days for that. I'm going to bring up uh, a gravioli detector and stick it on the station or something. But I got about just under six days to collect the magnetometer report because we are nicely nestled, if I can show this to you, nicely nestled in low space but in the inner radiation belt. So we're just going to hang around in here and then we're going to go to high space and just keep working our way out. How did that debris do this time? That's... Let's take a look. Set that as a target. What's its periapsis? Oh, it's even worse than before. Oh, this is not working as well as I'd hope. <laughs> Alright, let's... Uh, whoops. That's okay. Let's get out to Mimis. And... There's the maximum light there. Switch to. Oh, did I miss the burn? I knew I should have set an alarm for it. Oh, you bonehead. With that time warping, I missed the burn. That's okay. That's okay. We can move this burn over to the other side. Yeah, I'm sure it would have performed the scan fine in the orbit it was in. But I'm just, there we go. Um, fine, fine, fine. That's done. That's done. That's done. Uh, solar panels look like they got nice exposure. Let's, uh, one I think was my action group. There goes my 
my telescope. I should also have the antenna, so that should be starting to do its scan, that scatty, scan, scatty, scan, satty thing. We can lose our little probe there. Okay, we'll leave this to do its job. What else we have happening? I'm losing track of stuff. Oh, I just have two things being built. I got three construction bays, so I gotta get something else pushed in there. I'll have to think about what that's gonna be. You see the Moho 1 is also all ready. That launch window's coming up in just a little over 10 days. And Lagerfurt, my level 3 pilot, is going to be ready in less than two hours, and the Dudley is just sitting in the space plane hangar, just waiting for him. Oh, contract complete. What's this? Oh, our high resolution altimetry scan of Min Miss is done. Hoorah! There we are. Ooh, look at that. The colors. <laughs> I like the diamonds. Oh my gosh, so many maps, and I still got two more satellites to launch to do mapping. Got a lot of stuff coming up, but all of that has got to be for future episodes. In the meantime, I'm going to thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.